Good, let's go. So again, I'm Mark Spiegler, Global Director of Art Basel. Um, this has been the first hybrid fair in Art Basel's history, um, really perhaps the first in, in the history of the art market, in that on the one hand, we have 100 galleries in the Hong Kong uh, Convention and Exhibition Center, where we've always staged Art Basel Hong Kong. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you're not a resident of Hong Kong, it's you have to do a three-week quarantine to come into the city. And therefore, a uh, huge swaths of the art world, including myself and, 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 and Noah Horowitz, our director of Americas, who's joining us, um, and of course, a great many gallerists and artists and journalists and art lovers like yourself have been attending virtually. Um, and in the, you know, in the manner of this entire week, this will be a hybrid uh, walkthrough um, in, the, in the sense that we'll start with Adeline giving us an, an on-show walkthrough, an on, you know, on-site walkthrough of the, of, what's, of the show in its third day. Um, and then Noah and I will both share highlights from the online viewing rooms, which of course is accessible to anybody. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, I strongly encourage you after the fact, um, after we've, we've, um, we've done this, to go and take a look for yourselves. There's a large amount of work, work are getting constantly added. And what I say is that the work in the online viewing room reflects the great strength of the Hong Kong show historically, which is that it's always been a show which not only bridged East and West effectively, but also brought great artists from many, many generations. So you have wonderful historical material from Western artists, from Asian artists, but also cutting edge material from Western artists and Asian artists. Um, you know, again, thank you for joining. And I think I'm gonna hand it over to Adeline and let, us, let her take us for a walk around the show floor. Mar uh, Noah and I are gonna go off camera um, and, uh, and you know, so you can have the full screen for Adeline. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find a little uh, button that says Q&A or some variation of that, depending on what language you're watching this in. You can put questions in there and we'll try to answer them as things are going along. Adeline, take us on a tour. Hi. Thanks, Mark. And hey, Noah. Hi, everyone. I'm Adeline Uli, Director Asia of Art Basel. And here I am saying hi to you from the Hong Kong Convention Center. I'm actually really smiling, but you can't see this because it's a full mask on policy for the next five days of the show, um, of, of course, due to pre uh, COVID prevention measures. And what can I say? We are in the last half an hour of our Vernissage day. Today is day three. And I thought, you know what, um, as a special treat that I take you to um, along the insight sector, which is unique to the Hong Kong show. For many of you who do not know what this is, the insight sector focused specifically on projects by Asian artists, solo, historical, or especially curated. And um, it's, always been a, it's always been a highlight of the show in the sense that there's always been a great amount of discovery here, not only in terms of just historical material, but also works by um, career artists such as where I am right now. This is Kim Suja, as you can see, reflective material. And the title of this work is called um, Encounter Mirror Woman. So the reflection here is everything in, in, in this work. And, and, and as you can see, you know, I'll, as someone who don't really like my reflection that much, I'm trying to move away from it. But, um, but this, this work is, is really essentially about the reflection of the self, the multiple perception of the self and even if one denies the reflection but nevertheless here it is and and also i think with the reflective surfaces you see that the the entire blue surface opens up in the sense that the space opens up and and the, through the repetition it's been very interesting to just really watch how the audience has been interacting with this work and one of the things about the insights uh, pro uh, sector this year is that I want to say that we have 10 projects here. And while Japan figures quite strongly within this sector, I'd like to also point out to you, for example, works from Indonesian uh, from an Indonesian artist over here, like Fajar Siddiq, in conversation with a Taiwanese uh, master by Li Taitian. Here, abstraction is the key. Um, and Fajar Siddiq is, is perhaps um, another highlight for me personally, given my Southeast Asian roots. He is from Indonesia. And the abstraction here is, is incredibly unique because um, contrary to popular belief, abstraction here is, is really a return to one's roots, one's Asian or Indonesian identity. And, and if you look at the patterns, if you look at the forms, they reference traditional craft, they reference pattern making, and, and also the palette, which really is, is really all about 
you know, the earth and, and the light from, from the land itself. And I believe the camera here is taking you to Lee Tai Tian. So it's from Taiwan. And here, what the gallery is trying to do is to put 1970s abstraction in conversation with um, formalistic work by, by this artist whose, whose work is much, very much influenced by Zen architecture and forms. Okay, and now on to the next booth. Here we have Kogure featuring Noburo Takayama, a important Japanese artist from the Monoha period. Now this is uh, Kogure Gallery's first presentation with us in Hong Kong and we're very happy to welcome them. And with Takayama's work, I think the key here is, is really understanding yin and yang. So as, as the camera pans and as you see, you know, the artist is very much concerned with light and dark, positive and negative. And here it's, it's translated onto what's on paper as well as, as in those wood sculptures that you're seeing before you. All right. And next door, I bring you to Korea again, here with artist photographer Chung Hee Seong. Um, many of you may know of this particular artist's work, which was featured in the Gwangju Biennale uh, uh, three years ago. Um, and here, this is a body of work called 15 Climaxes. And it's, the artist is really concerned about photography. Here, it's about photography. And as we all know, photography is so powerful and so full of connotation and symbolism. And I think for, for the artist here, what she is trying to do is really to try and remove the, the emotions from the photography itself and really concentrate on the rose and its structure and its form, really just as a rose. And really, it's, it's, it's really quite beautiful out here and, and in, you know, against the blue walls. I think this is really one of the, one of the most loved booths uh, this year in, in, in the insect sector. And across the way, let me take you to what is really what I consider one of the greatest highlights in the Hong Kong show this year. And this is a booth uh, featuring Morita Shiryu by Shibunkaku, who is also a new gallery that we're welcoming to Hong Kong for the very, very first time. Now, Morita Shiryu is um, really, is such an influential figure and perhaps not very well known outside of Asia. Not only is he a calligrapher, but he's also um, the editor of a very influential magazine called Bokubi, which was, uh, which was produced between 1951 and 1981. Um, and this particular magazine has influenced the likes of Motherwell, as well as Franz Klein. And it has been claimed that without Bokubi, there would, you know, the abstract expressionists well may have been, you know, may have been a little bit would not have been able to uh, incorporate the calligraphic works that we see these days. Um, I want to show you this one particular work by Morita Shiryu. And this tells you a little bit about why I feel so passionately about this particular artist. Um, he, in so many ways, pushed the boundaries of, of calligraphy, breaking grounds by, by working, um, by turning calligraphy into almost a performance, into a performative act of painting. And here, if you look at this particular black work, and it may almost seem like a blob of black, but if you come closer and, and if you see it against the light, what you see is the trace of, of the brushwork, literally going across, you know, you could almost retrace the artist's, the artist's movement as, as he moves the brush across the surface. And a number of these works would have been made on the floor so imagine the sort of performance, the, the, the sort of being at one breath with the work in itself. And this remains one of the most powerful works that I've seen. And, and I keep coming back to this work daily. And I'm definitely going to miss this when the show is over. And finally, I would like to introduce you to a very special highlight for the Hong Kong show. A Hong Kong artist here by the name of Movana Chen, who you'll see here before me right now. Now, Movana's work is, again, another special take on the use of material. Um, here, she is, 
here what you see would be sculptures knitted out of text, used knitted out of paper. And, and basically these are maps and dictionaries. And um, what is special here is, is I suppose, you know, the act of knitting and also really it's a performance and the artist would be here normally on, on, a, on a normal day and she would continue to knit and to speak with, with the audience. Um, and I guess in, in some ways, you know, if you, if you have a conversation with Mavana, she's telling you about the fact that, you know, by the act of knitting the dictionary and the map together um, is, is really her way of trying to reimagine geographies, trying to reimagine communities and, and really ultimately it's really about diversity and plurality. Okay, I think that's all from me for now. And uh, Mark, Noah, I think I'll pass it back to you, or back to Zurich and back to New York. Thank you so much. And really wish you guys are here. All right, bye. Over to you, Mark. Good. I've shared my collection. I'm assuming everybody can see it. Um, and obviously it's a very different thing for the audience to see booths as we actually just saw versus an OVR, which is, which is a more obviously a, a more two dimensional experience. Um, I'm gonna start uh, and I'm using the collections feature which allows anybody to build collections of works that they like. I mean, the way I did it was I went through the entire OVR and I, I sort of, I, um, I chose everything that caught my eye and then I broke it up into collections. And for this walkthrough, I've tried to do a mix of entire booths, so to speak, or entire viewing rooms and individual artworks. I'm gonna start here with Bangkok City City Gallery, obviously a gallery from Bangkok. Um, and this is a solo booth by the artist Miti Rongkita, Kitya rather. Um, and it's really interesting because uh, it's, it's photography, obviously. Um, and it's photography that's based around a very specific neighborhood. Um, or it's a working class neighborhood, which is in the process of getting, I guess, gentrified and converted into more luxurious housing. And um, I mean, this is kind of, it, it's hard for us in the West to imagine this because we live so much in the context of surveillance capitalism. But this is an area, for example, where Google Maps just doesn't work, you know? Um, and what he's done on the one hand, and I'll just, Clicking on a couple of these is you have these, these these exterior spaces which are almost abstract because they're shot you know right at the edge of night at dusk, um, but then also you have these interior spaces, um, and and what he's done is to sort of strip the people out of it. And I I think and maybe I'm misreading it, but I think that's a way of talking about how you know these these spaces are first destined to be devoid of people because they get forced out and then. Um, then the spaces themselves will disappear altogether. So, I mean, for me, this is a total discovery. I mean, this is a gallery that hasn't been part of the, the, um, the Art Basel equation. Uh, and, and, you know, the artist, again, is someone I'd never heard of, but as someone who really loves urbanism and, and the ways that cities develop, I think it's, it's great work also aesthetically, you know, as well as conceptually. Um, next gallery, uh, Carlos Ishigawa, a really, really great gallery run by Vanessa Carlos in East London. Um, Many of you probably know, know her, the gallery and her artists. Um, and this isn't a solo booth, it's a group group booth. Um, and it includes um, people like, the, again, a Thai artist, Korkret, and then Arunan Chai. I always mispronounce that, even though he's a friend of mine. Ed Fornelis, Stuart Middleton, you know, Issy Wood, um, Oscar Murillo. You know, these are really, really, it's, it, and what's interesting about Vanessa's gallery, and it's reflected in this booth, is on the one hand that um, it is a gallery which has a very clear through line. And at the same time in the sort of old Leo Castelli model, it's a gallery which, which has been comprised by people of the same generation. And I think Vanessa is really someone who's quite at an early stage of her career. And I think all of these artists, you know, have the chance to, to grow tremendously in her gallery along with it. Um, she's also a committee member for Art Basel Hong Kong. Um, and I think really a leading light. So I would encourage you to follow her and her gallery. Next, we have um, a solo booth from David Kordansky. Most of you know David Kordansky is one of the greatest galleries of Los Angeles. Um, you know, someone who's really made his name in the last decade, um, not just by working by with younger artists, but also with more established artists. And Huma Baba is a great example of this. Um, 
Kuma Baba is primarily known, known in the art world for her sculptures. Um, I'll zoom in on one of them. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, you, those of you who remember Art Basel 2019, there was a huge one of these. She also had a whole, a, a huge installation on the roof, of, the roof of the Metropolitan Museum a few years ago. Um, what's also interesting for this room is that she's done a series of, uh, of flat work as well, you know, paintings. And, you know, it's interesting. I think when I first looked at this, I thought it had something to do with George Kondo, but then I actually, for my opinion, I think it's actually in a, a lot of ways more interesting and certainly darker. Again, you know, I don't want to go too slowly here, but I would I would encourage you to explore that booth online. Uh, sorry. OK, next room is loading. Uh, PPOW, another solo booth uh, by an artist I'd never heard of, Elizabeth Glasner. Uh, she's relatively young. There's a whole video here. If you click on this here where there's a thing, you can watch it about the, how, how she produces the work. And it's an interesting mix of very specifically done figuration. And then there's an element of chance where she kind of lets the, the, the paint pool and, and slip across the canvas in a way that creates a more coincidental things. I mean, these are, these are pretty interesting works. Um, I'll zoom in on one of them. Uh, they're quite surreal scenes. They're kind of dreamlike, um, you know, horrible or not so horrible, depending on, on what your taste is in these things, certainly very ambiguous. Um, and, you know, for me, very hard to look away from and to forget. And I think that's always a good sign, especially with an artist that I didn't know before. Moving on to the next room. Uh, empty Gallery, Hong Kong hometown favorite. Uh, Stephen Chang, just at a personal level, is, uh, the owner is one of my favorite gallerists. Um, and certainly I would say in the last 10 years, it's one of the galleries that really um, established itself you know, in the most interesting way. Um, Stephen works across a wide range of generations. Um, I'll zoom in on this Titian Su uh, work. Titian was an artist who was actually very active in the in the 80s and early 90s um, as part of the, the, the scene surrounding American fine arts, the legendary gallery in the Lower East Side. And Stephen, looking through the archival work around this gallery, noticed, of course, being Asian, he noticed this Asian name who he'd never heard of. And then he tracked down Titian Su a few years ago. Titian was teaching at a state university in New York and had really focused on his work and focused on raising a family. And, and Stephen convinced him to come back out so to speak, into the art world. Um, and he, a couple of years ago, he had both a, a great insights booth with historical material by Stephen and a great show in the gallery um, and really put him on the map again. And I think it's been very, it's been a, a great ride for Stephen and, and um, uh, Titian as well. James Hong is a Taiwanese American um, artist uh, known for these very tough videos. I won't play the video in the interest of time, but if you go down here, you can you can see that you can you can play it, um, and it's it's a swarm of insects going across the United States, which obviously has very strong political implications. Um, the last artist uh, in the booth is Taro Masu, Masushio, a Japanese American artist who works very much on the edge of abstraction, and that's a, a real theme that goes through. We already had it with Elizabeth Glasner, you know that there's. There's a lot of work that's neither figurative nor abstract, but just kind of right at the edge between the two. And, and from my perspective, particularly compelling because of that. Um, next room. Takanina Gawa, the last of the rooms that I'm sharing with you. Um, solo piece or solo solo booth uh, with Jan Vo, the great artist. Um, and who's in a lot of way, Jan Vo is, is reflective of the kind of um, universalism, the, the polycentricity of, of this fair in the sense that Jan Vo is a, was a Vietnamese refugee who went to Denmark and then um, now works in, in Berlin uh, and is being shown by a Japanese gallerist at a fair in Hong Kong. So it all kind of wraps together. Um, this is a, the, a body of work which is, um, which is drawn from his uh, 2019 uh, piece at the Venice Biennial. And there's a video of it here which we can watch um, or which we could watch if we had more time. I encourage you to do so when you get a chance. Um, and you know, this is images of, of the booth and you can see um, that it's just a, a lot of really complex work here. You can zoom in a little bit on this. Um, you know, you can see the enormous detail and complexity of this. I think it's, 
it's probably not a booth that you can understand well as a booth without actually being in it. But certainly there are a lot of great individual artworks in there. I'm now gonna transfer over. Sorry, bear with me. Great. So that was the viewing rooms. Those were, you know, all those were, you know, six galleries viewing rooms. Now I'm going to go into individual artworks. Um, I'm going to start with the youngest artist uh, and probably one of the youngest in the fairs. This is Paul Tabouret, a young uh, Guadeloupean uh, French artist uh, born in 1997, showing with Felicia Hertling. I think he's actually still in school. Um, and uh, He's just one of those artists that, that really caught fire in recent times. Um, he shows with Belice Hertling. Belice Hertling is a, is a gallery that has an enormous history with, with Art Basel Hong Kong. I remember one of the first fairs that we did introducing them to uh, Antenna Space, the great gallery from Shanghai. And they've done, you know, they've, they've done a lot of work together for their artists over the years. They're, they're people who really embraced, um, embraced Asia. You know, they've, they've, they've set up, you know, they've, they've been to a lot of fairs in Asia. They've been regular great participants in the Hong Kong show. Um, going from Tabouret, I'll go to Giorgio de Chirico, uh, totally opposite thing, obviously, um, an incredibly well-established artist, you know, one of the, the major artists from, from the, the mid-century, mid-last century in Italy with these kind of surreal dreamscapes. I mean, to me, much more interesting than Salvador Dali, you know, although people see relationships between the, between the two. I think de Chirico, with this kind of mix of brutalist architecture, classical structures, et cetera, is, is you know, one of the really singular artists of uh, painters of that of that time period. Um, I'm going to go down now to Liu Fan. Liu Fan, I think, probably needs no introduction. Um, this is a great piece of Kamel Manur. Um, the piece is made by him uh, taking a brush stroke and then just kind of running it, running the brush, you know, dabbing it on the surface until it kind of runs out of paint. Um, I, I learned an interesting thing actually about Liu Fan, uh, which I hadn't known before yesterday during a tour that Elaine Eng did from Asian Art, Art Asia Pacific, which is that Liu Fan was more a, a critic than an artist at first. And he, he was Korean, he is Korean, he's still alive. And I always wondered why this one Korean was in the Monoha movement. And it turns out that Liu Fan was writing about Monoha, which was the Japanese movement of the 60s. And he liked the idea so much that he actually decided to become a Monoha artist. Um, in any case, I think, you know, there's, there's, no bad, no such, there's no, th there's no such thing as a bad Liu Fan. Um, and there's several of them in the fair and in the, in the OVR. Um, this piece I think also bears moving into, this is a total discovery for me. Um, Sofu Tishigahara, um, Japanese artist. Um, it's funny because I had just been to the, the Beiler Foundation in Rian outside of Basel and I, I started having flashbacks to art, and yet there was something that was more organic to it. Um, and it turns out that, that uh, he actually, that the artist actually comes out of, originally comes out of the, the tradition of Japanese flower arranging. Um, and, you know, if you go down, if you zoom into the surfaces, you can see just how beautiful they are, um, you know, and, and also sort of the relationship to the relationship to flower making or flower arrangements. Okay, good. Um, another, uh, uh, again, at the totally different end of the scale, here we have Lili Chan, a great young artist from Hong Kong, the most recent winner of the BMW Art Journey Award. Um, these very interesting pieces made from sort of um, industrial parts, et cetera, uh, and it's, it's just fascinating. She's really she's someone who's very much into materials research. Again, there's a video if you you know if you have the time and the inclination to watch it. And here at the bottom, you see more pieces from her. I think it's it's I, it's not a work that I fully understand yet, but it's definitely work that I think is worth exploring. Um, to her right, Thomas Demand. Uh, this is work where Thomas Demand uh, took photographs of the paper forms that were used by the. Tunisian French designer Azadine Alia um, and in, in making the clothing. And what was interesting is that originally Thomas Demand was known for taking a, a photograph and then remaking it out of paper um, and then photographing the paper. So it was sort of deuxième, troisième degree as the, as the French would say. Um, and this is him taking a sort of shorter cut, but I think I like the work a lot. 
Um, Robert Longo, great piece. Um, again, you know, this is, as I said before, I see often this theme of sort of going between abstraction and figuration. And this, obviously, if you look at it closely, is the barrel of a Beretta, the famous Italian pistol. Um, but if you look at it at first, it looks like some sort of abstract piece, maybe like a, you know, like it could be like a Louise Nevelson abstract sculpture or something. And I think, you know, Longo, I think, is one of the great subtly political artists. Um, and this piece where you've got the gun sort of, pay, you know, pointing straight at you is one that I keep looking at. You know, every every time I come across in the OVR, it strikes me, you know, right between the eyes, so to speak. Last but not least, and you can't go wrong by finishing with Wolfgang Tillmans, you know, um, Tillmans really arguably the greatest photographer working today. And in part because he's so good at doing both incredibly figurative documentary kind of work and totally abstract things and, and always sort of drawing out the sensuality within a piece. And here, you know, it's just it's just a, a fig and a plum on a plate. And yet somehow it becomes this almost totemic kind of image. So, you know, obviously this was just, so to speak, uh, an, an appetizer. Um, for what you can find in the OVRs, you know, I strongly encourage you to spend the time to go through them. Noah, on that note, I'm going to hand it over to you to show us even more that we should be checking out. Thanks, Mark. Um, that was really awesome. Um, I am now going to share my screen. Um, and away we go. So um, I think continuing on a lot of Mark's themes, but, you know, maybe from my perspective a little bit, I. I um well first of all welcome everybody second of all uh, sitting in New York and not being in Hong Kong is is such a shame I I you know in many ways Hong the our show in Hong Kong each year is really my favorite of our shows each year because it's such a place of discovery um for uh for so many and especially coming from America there's so many galleries artists um other people collectors institutions that one gets to to see and meet and it's it's so special and I think. A lot of that comes through the OVR as well. Um, I'll touch on some of that in a moment. Maybe to begin, I think one of the really neat things with the OVR is the ambition um, of how uh, our, our galleries really leverage uh, these digital tools to, to do so much of what they would normally do at an Art Basel show uh, in the real. Um, White Cube's uh, presentation is a wonderful example of that. Um, this is a, a beautiful work by Isama Noguchi, the famous sculptor from the early 80s here. Um, and White Cube is actually, as you know, when you read about this, um, is using their uh, OVR presentation uh, to launch uh, their representation uh, of the artist in collaboration with the Isama Noguchi uh, Foundation in Queens, uh, New York, where I live. And it's such a cool uh, thing to see in this digital format. Uh, one of the great galleries in the world, London, with uh, you know an iconic sculptor uh, and launching a new a, a new platform for representation. I also think uh, just uh, formally that this sculpture is just extraordinary. Um, and so a, a wonderful example of how our galleries use these digital tools uh, to, um, to 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 do so much of what they would usually do in the halls. This is uh, uh, Andreas Gursky. This is a, a photograph from 2020 of uh, HSB, the HSBC Tower, the bank in Hong Kong. So it's really very thoughtfully site specific in the sense um, you have this sort of slightly, uh, you have this sort of poetic, these words that flash across the screen that are both abstract, but also, you know, quite heavy uh, and relay both uh, to uh, some topics, I mean, borders, uh, things like this that are very, you know, very of the moment. Um, the presentation is also, uh, again, as you read, um, directly pitted in relation to Gursky's uh, exhibition, uh, which is on in, in Leipzig uh, right now. So uh, again, really clever use. And, and Gursky, of course, um, uh, for anybody that doesn't know Gursky is, you know, really one of the, the most iconic photographers uh, or artist really uh, of the last decade, somebody that really in the, in the 90s took photography and, and really put it front and center um, as, uh, a, as such an important medium and, and such an iconic artist. Um, in terms of discovery, uh, there's, there's a lot of um, neat things. This is um, an artist that, that I discovered on the OVR this week, um, shown by Antenna Space, which is one of the great young galleries in Shanghai. 
Um, it's a woman uh, called Evelyn Tao Cheng Wang. Um, she's from Nanjing, um, studied at the Stadel uh, Schule in, in Frankfurt, which is one of the iconic um, and, and great art schools anywhere. She lives now in, in the Netherlands. Um, and, you know, there, there are these, uh, it's a whole installation of these, uh, these watercolors and ink drawings uh, that really reference a lot of classic Chinese ink painting, um, but through her own very poetic, um, slightly ironic lens, these stamps, these texts, uh, this is like a Dutch landscape. Um, super interesting artist, somebody that I, I will certainly follow much more extensively um, in the future. I, I really, I really love the work. You, you kind of, you, you can easily overlook it in a sense, but there's a lot going on here. Um, and and I'd, I'd encourage you to, to get to know her and also the, the gallery. Um, moving outside from that, um, going to Los Angeles, um, Anat Egby is, is a great artist or a great gallerist rather in, in Culver City showing uh, Greg Ito. Um, he studied in San Francisco, lives in, in LA and um, you know, he creates these like totally detailed hyper-realistic um, uh, paintings. This is like this keyhole into this sort of strange universe with this burning flower. Um, and uh, I, I really, uh, really love this work. Um, there's a few other pieces that are in Anat's booth uh, as well that are, are worth taking in, but it's it's like hyper-realistic, sort of futuristic, also kind of dystopian, really cool. Um, I've seen Greg's works before, but don't really know him that well. So again, um, a wonderful moment um, of discovery. Um, heading back to Asia, uh, PKM Gallery in, in Seoul is, is one of the great galleries in Korea. Koo Jong An, uh, Koo Jong -ah is, a, is a Korean artist based mainly, I think, in, in London. Um, she's an old friend of mine, actually, and and she's created these um, sort of phosphorescent paintings, and there's like glow in the dark paintings. I have little kids, and we have stars and stuff in their bedrooms, and like when the lights go out, you have this this kind of universe. And Koo's paintings uh, really draw on that. They're totally magical, really about the essence of seeing and visualization. Um, and our experience with objects and how objects change in and, and, and our perceptions of those objects change uh, in different settings. It's kind of a simple technique in a way, um, but she's a super sneaky, just in, deeply intelligent uh, artist and, and her work never really translates immediately. You sort of have to go below the surface to get it. Um, so I, I really love um, these, these star paintings. Um, in terms of discovery again, um, Liu Zhao Wei is a, a painter that Edouard Malang is one of the great Hong Kong based gallerists is showing. Um, this piece uh, caught my eye in the OVR. I was fortunate earlier this morning um, to do a, a virtual tour actually through the halls and, and spoke with Edouard and, and, and Zoomed with him in, in his booth. And I was just so astounded. And one of the things that can be a little bit tricky sometimes in, in a virtual setting is the scale of these paintings. This is a really large work actually. Um, much larger than I had taken um, uh, uh, taken for granted just by looking at it online. Um, super interesting artist. Again, somebody that I didn't know before, um, somebody that sh surely should be on your radar. Um, similarly, Nabuki, um, really interesting. Um, I think uh, Nabuki is originally from Mongolia, trained at Kaffa, um, which is uh, Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing. Um, uh, has this like very mysterious kind of uh, stairway to nothing sculpture. Maybe it's not a stairway at all. Just a beautiful form. Um, really interested in this artist. Had a big show at the UCCA in Beijing a few years ago. Um, somebody that should be on, on everybody's radar, I think. Um, elsewhere in Asia, um, one in J Gallery in Korea is a gallery I, I love. Zheng Li um, stages these sort of, these sort of uh, landscape fictions uh, meet poetry. Um, I am lost in you is this, this photograph from 2017. I've seen these works before, um, but I really like one and Jay's presentation here. I, I think they're just really beautiful, um, sort of simple, poetic, um, slightly mysterious, um, and and really gorgeous works. And and again, like really interesting artist, fantastic gallery from Seoul. Um, outside of that. Um, you know, there, there's uh, 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 so much other work. I mean, I, I, I had the, the uh, great chance also this morning in my tour of, of the show 
to speak with uh, Ten Chancery Lane Gallery. Huang Rei uh, is one of the iconic artists that really is the, the, one of the founders of the STARS group, uh, really the, the, the first major Chinese avant-garde founded in 1979. Um, this is a, uh, an atypical Huang Rei painting in the sense that Huang Rei is really known more for, for geometries um, and, and more rigid um, abstractions. Of course, this isn't an abstraction, it's a, it's a portrait um, sort of drawn through a Western lens. But um, in, in speaking with Katie from the gallery this morning, I came to know that not only did this work date from the very beginning of the STARS moment in 1979, and, and therefore really places it right at the beginning of, of, of sort of history making in China, but it was quite uh, pushing the boundaries at the time uh, and quite controversial to have sort of drawn on, on this slightly Western form through the, 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 the lens of uh, a, a Chinese painter. And I, I think it's just a, a, a stunning painting um, and, and so wonderful. Um, maybe I'll end um, with Trevor Shimizu. Um, this is uh, a, an artist shows with 47 Canal Gallery, um, one of the great galleries uh, anywhere these days, uh, Oliver Newton's based on the Lower East Side. I think Trevor's work is, is really sneaky. Um, I, I didn't quite get it at first. I mean, it looks, quite simple. Um, this is um, sort of a, a, first of all, it's also a really large scale painting. It's interesting the way he he doesn't paint to the edge of the canvas. He sort of leaves all this, um, this white space at the edge. Um, you know, this is also sort of uh, a young artist working through Giverny, through Monet, um, but in this kind of very nonchalant way. Um, and Trevor's painting is, is kind of this like hacker slack um, painting style, but also super interesting um, and, and somebody that I think should be on everybody's radar uh, as well. Um, I could go on. I'm conscious of time. I think I've spoken for about 10 minutes. Um, I also have this beautiful uh, Sofu uh, Teshi Gahara uh, work from Takeishi in my highlights. Uh, Take is one of the great galleries anywhere from Japan. Um, but without further ado, I think I'll hand back um, uh, to, to, to Mark and Addy and, uh, and, and take the rest from there. So thank you. Great, thanks everybody for, for sticking with us this long. And thanks to Noah and Adeline for those wonderful highlights. Um, we don't have a bunch of questions. There was, there was one question that was asked about which were the galleries that were, were which were the artists that were in Adeline's tour. We didn't, we didn't prepare this that closely, but what I can do is I'll put into the chat the names of the, uh, I'll put in the names of the chat into the, in the chat the names of the galleries that that uh, Adeline toured. Um, we have no further questions. We have some very nice compliments. Thank you, and it's been great to to have you with us. I mean, as we all know, it would be wonderful for us to be there. But next year, next March, we'll all be in Hong Kong together. Um, and for now, if you're in Hong Kong, uh, then please go to the show. Um, you know, tomorrow and the day after. And then not not now, Addy. I know the show is closed. We go to the show tomorrow <laughs> and the day after. Um, and uh, if not, I really encourage you, as as Noah and I sort of just touched the skim the surface on. There's amazing work in the OVR. There's a lot to learn. You know, a lot to discover. So on that note, I think I'll say uh, good night to Adeline and uh, wish Noah a good rest of the day in in New York. And uh, you know, wish everyone a great weekend. Um, we wish we could be together, but we will be soon. Ciao, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.